we can't be mad at the rain because nope. if we look at what we had last year, uh, 120 days without any measurable rainfall, we only got one hay cutting last year. Howdy folks, welcome back to Black Sheep Meadow. I'm Brent. And I'm Amber. And today we're out checking out on our pasture. We've had uh, quite a bit of rain, haven't we? Over the last month, I think it's been pretty pretty consistent with the rain. On and off every couple of days, getting rain showers. Uh, we've been really looking to cut our hay. We are way behind on this. Uh, we've got standing water in a bunch of different places. Uh, it's just gonna be a few more days before we can get it cut. It's gonna so, be a little bit. but. We can't be mad at the rain because nope. if we look at what we had last year, uh, 120 days without any measurable rainfall, we only got one hay cutting last year. So maybe next I'll, week. I'll take the too much rain, I think. So in the meantime, I think we're going to get some tractor maintenance done. We are uh, we're a little bit behind on that. I say we are. I'm a little bit behind on that. I don't do tractor maintenance. So uh, Amber's so. been after me for a while. I've got a mechanical background. That's what I do for my primary job. And uh, Amber's been after me for a long time to do some YouTube videos on some either mechanical repair and or maintenance. So mm -hmm. I think she's gonna get a little bit of her wish today. I hope so. So follow along. Okay, so today we're gonna do a little maintenance on our tractor. As you know, here the next come in, hopefully the next 10 days, we're gonna be able to get our pasture cut and raked and baled. Uh, that will all be a video of its own. Uh, today, we are going to do all the maintenance on this piece of equipment. I am not giving you, this is not a video on how to maintain this particular piece of equipment, but just in general. Uh, you gotta remember, we are the Black Sheep Meadow Homestead and I, we want y'all to be self-sufficient and do things for yourself. Don't take them to a, a facility to have it repaired if you can do it at home. Um, odds are your piece of equipment doesn't match this one anyways. So first things first, we're gonna start changing some oil. I'm gonna collect all that oil in a bucket so I can take it to the proper place to have it disposed of. And I'm just a little bit overdue on my own maintenance. Not too terribly bad. The maintenance required come on this uh, tractor a few weeks ago and told me I needed to service it. And of course, what did I do? I just cleared it and kept on going. But uh, we're actually not over on, on the hours for this service interval, so we'll be all right. But everything, and it doesn't matter if it's, uh, it doesn't matter if it's a tractor, the lawnmower, the mule, the fuel filter on your own fuel tank, your vehicle, it doesn't matter. Uh, basically learn how to, you know, learn how to maintain the equipment or uh, the things that you have, you know. Uh, quit, once again, quit depending on the system, the Jiffy Lubes to be there. I can tell you uh, most of the time they know less about your vehicle than what you do, even though you don't think that way. often would you recommend somebody do this? Uh, well, this particular piece of equipment is every 250 hours. That being said, something like the zero turn lawnmower is gonna be a little uh, more frequent than that. I believe the zero turn lawnmower, I think that Kawasaki engine wants every 150. That being said, we don't put 150 hours on the mower annually, so it gets it, the mower's gonna get the oil change annually on it anyways. Generally, every year I put a set of blades, uh, do the service, all the service work on it. So uh, so once a year, you should do a complete once over on them. It depends on how much you're using the equipment. If you're using the equipment more than the, the recommended hours for that service interval, then you might be doing a service interval twice a year instead of annually. So let's uh, get to our filters over here. Okay, so this is a couple of things I think I've talked about in the past, maybe on an uh, equipment, homestead equipment video. Um, but that being said, all of our equipment is purchased or at least we're able to buy the service parts for it locally. Uh, we have a Case New Holland dealer just it's right up the road on our normal route into town. So I'm able to stop by even on a trip after work or way home from work, I'm able to stop by and pick up the filters or the parts that I need. Um, 
And I say this because I've seen several people purchase, uh, you know, even if it's something as simple as a chainsaw or a weed eater, it's not serviced in their area and they're having to order parts online, which may take several weeks to come in versus having a service center that has it on the shelf. You can pick it up on a Saturday morning. Um, going into that here, once again, I'll use all quality filters from the manufacturer. I've seen too many aftermarket uh, filters cause issues even in the automotive industry. We have, um, you gotta remember the aftermarket world is just, they're not, generally they are not there to make things better. They're there to make it cheaper. So uh, we wanna run the highest quality parts that we possibly can on our equipment because we don't need the downtime on the homestead, especially in the middle of hay cutting season and I have to get it done. Uh, show Rotilla T4 engine oil is what's going in our tractor. This has kind of become a rarity lately. It's harder to get, seems in the past year, year and a half or so. Uh, I was able to snag this from the shop, so uh, I've got a, I won't call it a stash, but maybe a little hideaway of it for my own personal use up there. Uh, the T4 Rotella, now I may get some people to come in here and say, oh, you gotta run a T5 or a T6 engine oil or a partial synthetic, full synthetic. Uh, the reality of it is, is I have seen, we have several trucks that come into our shop that are just shy of a million miles doing nothing but uh, T4 Rotella. And now granted, they're hot shot drivers, so they're, they're on the highway a lot. They're not the in-town drivers, you know, stop and go traffic. But um, the T4, at the end of the day, if we were to pull an oil sample from this, even after a 10,000 mile interval on say a, a light duty diesel pickup, the, the T4, the oil itself is still generally good. It's contaminated with carbon or acids or anything else from the combustion process that's in it, which means you need to change it. So that's not gonna, a synthetic oil isn't gonna help those scenarios. So uh, that's what we're using here. We're gonna get it, get it installed, get it done. Just a little bit of oil up here. All right, so now we're on to the fuel system of this. We got two different filters. We got a fuel filter and a water and fuel separator. I want y'all to take note that I do have a bucket catching everything here so I can take it to the shop and dispose of it later. A couple of things with these fuel filters. We're gonna see once I get it off here. I don't believe these say it. We'll look at the new ones. A lot of times, the fuel filter will have a some type of marking on it that'll tell you, uh, do not pre-fill fuel filter. All right, so the purpose behind this, uh, first off, this is a Bosch fuel injection system. Uh, many of you may not know this, but uh, it has what they call a Bosch CP4 pump, uh, which is actually very popular in the automotive industry as well. We see them on Volkswagens, Mercedes, uh, Ford General Motor, and the Ram trucks uh, on the, some of the Cummins applications. The purpose of them telling you do not pre-fill the fuel filter is because you're, you may be adding or introducing unclean fuel to the fuel system. That being said, I think the CP4 pump failures that we've had is a lot to do with what they call hydraulic hammering. Uh, a lot of you guys, we've talked about this in the irrigation videos before. A lot of you guys that are plumbers, y'all are gonna know exactly what I'm talking about, but it's where a system is trying to pressurize and there's an air pocket and water will hydraulically slam or impact a component inside the system, uh, thus doing damage. So therefore, even if it did say, you know, pre-fill your, or do not pre-fill your fuel filter, I do simply because I know that 
that the hydraulic impact of the air pocket is far worse than and I'm not even going to say there's a possibility because I've already pre-filtered all my fuel. All my fuel goes through a fuel uh, filtration system out of our own diesel tank. So I know I've got clean fuel that I'm introducing to it. Uh, that's why I pre-fill my filters. Alright, so as we get our water and fuel separator off here, make sure I'm catching everything in my bucket. Uh, I like to, Amber's probably gonna be mad at me, but I'm sacrificing one of our ball mason jars, or glass jars for canning. And on our, let's set it up here so I can get it. On this, I want to because this water and fuel separator is our first line of defense, and I've already mentioned that this can be a problematic fuel system. I wanna make sure if we have any algae or dirt or water issues, I'm gonna pick it up right here. I'll be able to see what's going on. And generally, we do a pretty good job at uh, making sure our diesel fuel is clean. Uh, Y'all might have seen in a different video, on a, I think it's an on-grid, off-grid video, where we talked about our uh, homestead fueling station right here on the homestead. And we're going to dispose of that filter. And as you can see, we have some very, very clean diesel. There is no water or dirt contaminant in that at all. Maybe a few little specks, but I think those came off of the outside of the filter whenever I uh, set it up there. But that's very clean diesel. That's exactly what I'm looking for. Let's me know that I've been doing my job prior during fueling and et cetera and so on. Okay, so once again, we are gonna pre-fill our water and fuel separator. Uh, we don't wanna introduce any air to the fuel system. Folks on filters, I know there's a lot of service guys out there that are probably gonna laugh at this, but on filters, as soon as the gasket touches, it's a quarter turn. No need to grill a lock. Plug our water and fuel sensor back in. All right, so we're gonna check the hydraulic oil in here now. Uh, I've recently changed the hydraulic filter in this. Uh, I'm not gonna change the filter again today, but I need to check to make sure that the hydraulic oil level is correct. Anytime we hook up an implement to this tractor, whether it's the grapple or something on the uh, remotes on the rear, we could be consuming some of the hydraulic oil that's in the reservoir here. Now, once again, everybody's piece of equipment's gonna be different. Not everybody's gonna have a uh, hydraulic oil fill location in the same spot. But for reference, I would like to note that I'm going to clean off any of the dirt and debris around the fill plug before I remove the fill plug because I don't want that dirt and debris entering my system. So we're gonna use just a little bit of brake clean. Clean everything up. We're gonna bust it loose. And my fill level is actually in the crosshatch area. 
So I can send that right back where it was. All right, so we're gonna check our air filtration. I believe this is dual. We are not bad at all on this filter, so we're gonna knock the dust out of it and uh, reinstall it. All right, so while we're doing things like this, we're also gonna pay attention, look at our serpentine belt. Make sure it's not cracked, all the pulleys look fine. This is still a relatively new tractor, so we don't have a whole lot, of, whole lot to be wrong with quite yet. I wanna check the radiator, or actually the whole cooling stack, not just the radiator. It's got a hydraulic oil cooler, an intercooler, a radiator. Several other coolers on it. I don't know what that one actually is. Looks like a yeah, hydraulic, maybe a power steering fluid cooler. But we want to check and make sure. Even then, I haven't had it in a whole lot. There's just a few little sticks in here. I'm gonna get a few, few little blades of grass. And talk about how important that is yeah we probably see uh <laughs> most of the engine failures that we see is due to a engine overheat concern um, I mean, it's important it needs airflow that's how this whole system operates Okay, so on inspection of the serpentine belt, I found that one of the hydraulic lines coming to the front for the hydraulic cooler, the hose clamp is actually touching and just barely rubbing the lower radiator hose. So uh, what I'm gonna do, this obviously has been this way since this piece of equipment was manufactured. And more than likely, if I had to guess, over time the radiator hose has sagged from heat just a little. So I'm going to loosen the clamp and move it approximately 30 degrees or so to where it is no longer touching the radiator hose. You have to move the camera. All right, so all over this tractor, there's all kinds of joints and uh, pivot points that have grease circs on them. Uh, one of my biggest pet peeves is someone that comes along and just shoves a grease gun on all this already dirty grease cert and shoves all that dirt that's on the outside of this grease cert into the pivot point of the joint. So I'm gonna go with the paper towel and I'm gonna clean every single one of these zerks. Just like so, before I shoot new grease into that joint. And it is best to have a hand help you, so I'm gonna put y'all on a momentary time lapse and Amber's gonna help me clean all these joints or the zerks before I grease them. Okay, so we got our tractor maintenance done for the day, huh? For the year, for the annual, anyways. We got you our, uh, well, we got our service done on it. And you know, it really doesn't matter if it's a tractor or a lawnmower or your car or the water filtration system on your rainwater collection system. Uh, if, if you are you know, on your homestead, if we're, we're trying to get y'all to be self-sufficient, you know, do something for yourself, quit paying somebody else or uh, depending on the system to do it for you. And maintenance is definitely one of those things that if you have a homestead and you can do, 
any of this stuff, gardening or you know water irrigation, you can do the maintenance on your equipment. Yes. It just takes a little bit, do a little bit of research on your particular equipment and you will find out that the maintenance part of it, you don't need to be paying somebody to do. And, and the plus side here is, you know, we're kind of at a stall right now. We've got uh, all of our garden is in the ground and going. Mm -hmm. uh, we're not having to deal with irrigation issues right now because of all the rain. So we're kind of at a stall where we're waiting for the pasture to dry up to where we can get our hay cut. Uh, which is going to be an excellent video. I'm looking forward to that here in the next, hopefully, eight to ten days. Hopefully here very quick because our hay needs to be cut. Pretty bad. So, but, um, yeah, if, we, if we're all looking out for you guys, you know, we want y'all to become self-sufficient and uh, do it for Just yourself. Try to try to do for yourself a little bit. It, it's, um, not, it's not as bad as it seems. No, it's you got to put in the effort. If it is work, I'll give you that. It is work. It but uh, put in the effort and it is rewarding at the end. Yep. And then try to plan it out. Like he said, he was a little bit behind. Um, this is stuff that he normally would have done last month. Yeah, so the mechanic's personal equipment is always the last to get worked on. So plan that out on your homestead too. Plan to do your homestead on the downtime. Yep. And, way, uh, and then be on the lookout for those and looking doing your periodic maintenance or your yearly maintenance mm -hmm. look out for those things like that screw rubbing on the water hose yep. the um the, the radiators of that is a hydraulic hose clamp touching the, hose their, clamp. Their the hose lower clamp radiator hose yeah. touching the lower radiator hose look for things like that they yeah. shift they move and that could be a radiator that hose could, that could have been pretty bad if i wouldn't have been paying attention it would have rubbed through not only could the engine have overheated damaging the engine but it would have been at, i guarantee you it would have happened at a time where the tractor was in the middle of the hay field. Correct. <laughs> I could not have any downtime at that point. So yeah. the little things like that, if we can prevent them, uh, it improves or increases progress later on. So. It definitely does that. And it's the cost. Mm -hmm. So it took him, you know, 20 seconds to move it versus Correct. the downtime, the coolant, the radiator hose. It would have cost him several hundred dollars. We probably spent maybe 30 minutes tops doing this maintenance today. Oh, yeah. And I would have had at least three times that amount of time and more effort loading this tractor on the trailer to take it into town to the service station to have it, uh, to the service facility to have right. it service. So. Right. And it's always good to just look over your equipment. Yep. So, guys, in the meantime, we're looking forward to hay week next week. Hopefully, we still got a lot of harvest that we're going to get in. Cross your fingers for yes. that. Yes. So, but in the meantime, if y'all like our channel, uh, go ahead and subscribe. If you like today's video, go ahead and like it. If ring, you got any, ring the little ring bell for the notifications. Bell. If you got any questions, leave them down in the comment section. Yep. We'll make a point to go and answer those. Yep. If you have questions on something, then let us know. In the meantime, we'll see y'all next week. See you next week.